Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Simple Low Carb Lifestyle Podcast. Uh, today, I have uh, two of my favorite low carb and keto friends on today, Dr. Eric Westman and uh, Amy Berger. How are you both doing today? Great. Thank you. Yeah, doing well. How about you, Corey? I'm wonderful. Um, as you guys can probably imagine, feeling great because I'm feeding my body like it's supposed to be fed. As Dr. Eric Westman is wearing right now, his shirt says Body by Bacon. And Amy was showing me her um, bacon plush pillow. Yes, it was a there gift. It is. I, I did not buy this for myself. This was a gift. <laughs> and if uh, you're listening to this saying, what in the world am I not looking at? Uh, go to YouTube and uh, you can take a look at it there too. So I'd like to just start uh, with both of you. Give us a little bit of your backgrounds. What got you into uh, keto and low carb? I know you both have obviously different stories and I've heard them both, but I think it'd be beneficial to hear where you came from, first of all, uh, before we start getting into um, a project that you, you've been working on that's coming out really soon. So uh, whoever would like to go first, and we'll go from there. I, th I think we'll start with the fancier credentials. I think, Eric, you should go first. Well, I, I, I was going to be uh, deferring to you, Amy. Well, all right then. Um, uh, so I am a, a low carb and keto oriented nutritionist, and this is not my first career. I, I was in and out of jobs that I did not like and did not find all that satisfying. And I had my own low carb success story. I'm, I'm not unlike so many other people out there. I thought I was doing all the right things. You know, I was carrying excess weight and I ate a low fat diet. I did lots and lots of exercise and the weight just did not budge. No matter what I did, no matter how hard I worked, the weight did not seem to want to move. And I spent a lot of years blaming myself and really with poor self-esteem because I just couldn't get this weight off and, and just feeling, feeling like a failure. And I stumbled upon the Atkins diet. Um, my, I joke, I, it's not a joke though, it's just funny. My mother got Dr. Atkins' New Diet Revolution, one of his, his books at a yard sale back, you know, 20 years ago when people still had yard sales and um, well, more than 20 years ago now. And she never ended up reading it, but I did. And it just made sense. And I said, I'm, I'm gonna try this. And I, I remember the first time I put heavy cream in my coffee instead of skim milk and it was so thick and rich. And I was thinking, am I gonna feel my arteries clogging immediately yeah. or is it gonna take a while? But anyway, long story short, of course the weight came off and I um, you know, stuck with it. I, I made that just the way I eat for the long term. And like I said, after being in and out of some jobs that were unfulfilling, it occurred to me, hey, like nutritionist is a career. I could learn more about this formally and help other people implement low carb and ketogenic diet. So that's what I did. And now I, I'm a freelance writer. I do a lot of writing in, in health and nutrition, mostly related to low carb diets and keto. But I, I do work with clients and I, um, not to prolong this story, but I entered this nutrition community via my own personal weight loss story but over the mm. past two decades that i've been learning about this way of eating i'm now of the mindset that weight loss is one of the least impressive things this way of eating can do for you I and mean, dr westman yes. will mention that you can reverse type 2 diabetes pcos you can improve all kinds of things like hypertension and gout and skin issues and pms and, and the list goes on and on so you know let's not be little weight loss, but there's so much else that this can do that I'm just um, really, really excited and privileged to be able to teach other people about it. I know one of the things I'd like to say is, you know, come to low carbon keto for the weight loss, you stick around for everything else. And um, yeah. also something else that I, I remember the first time I saw you share your uh, running picture and it's like, I think something that we need to understand is it's very easy for us to look at people and go, they don't, they, they don't need low carb or keto, look at them. And yet we don't know where they came from. And it's just interesting to hear your story like so many others, low fat and exercise, you know, I mean, you pounded the pavement, but it didn't do any good, but it was the simple changing it to a proper diet made all the difference in the world, which is, um, makes a big difference in our lives. Yep. Uh, so Dr. Westman. Sure. Well, my story is a little different, uh, but about 20 years ago, um, two of my patients did the Atkins diet. I didn't know anything about it. I'm an internal medicine specialist at Duke. And at that time I was in training and, and um, in a practice 
of ambulatory care at a VA hospital, uh, Veterans Affairs Hospital in Durham, North Carolina. And two of my patients lost all this weight doing the Atkins diet. And I didn't really, you know, we don't get any training in medical school, sadly, about nutrition or weight loss even. And today it's the same state in just about every school. We don't get much training on trying to change that. But so 20 years ago, two of my patients did this diet. It clearly worked, but there were all sorts of concerns about the safety of it. Uh, yeah. But the curiosity led me to write Dr. Atkins a letter and he called back and it turns out we ended up going to his office and seeing patients being seen. And then I asked him for money to, to do research on the diet back at Duke. So for me, it's, that started in 1998 where we started to collect data in you know, really good uh, quality data that led to publications and research. And we were one of two groups in the US that started looking at the Atkins diet in terms of health and safety. And we were surprised and everyone else has been surprised that it actually is a fine thing to do to not eat mm -hmm. lots of sugar and starch. But going back you know, 20 years ago, there was such fear about even studying it that a dietitian complained to my hospital director and they wanted to shut down that first study. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of shocked because I didn't really know you know, what kind of terrible depths I went down to in studying this. I was, I was just curious. <laughs> so, um, you know, 20 years later now, we, we've published lots of papers and so have a lot of other research centers around the world. I opened a clinic at Duke 15 years ago to use a low carb keto diet for a clinical practice. And that's where, as Amy mentioned, we're, we're using this for all sorts of different medical problems. And, um, and I have a comfort level treating people with the diet that perhaps few other doctors have. A lot of doctors are still worried about it. And I just, you know, almost laugh, you know, I wear funny shirts about it because yep. uh, I've just been around it so long and heard the same uh, terrible mistaken notions about it for so long uh, that, uh, but it was the science that got me interested in seeing it work. Uh, I don't have any uh, big clinical weight loss story myself. I just was someone who wanted to follow the data and clearly saw that it would benefit if it was if it was safe. I mean, it might, remember these two patients did it on their own without me. I guess I didn't yeah. mention that they did it, and I thought if this is safe and something I can recommend, ah, obesity that'll be gone in 20 years. Yeah, now it's 20 years later, and we yeah. still have these problems. So it's more complicated than that. But uh, so I, I'm a pretty data driven. Uh, individual and um, that's how I got into this and how I got stuck. <laughs> Say you have been stuck, haven't you? It's actually interesting. All of us about 20 years ago started this for as a result of the same man. Um, all of us in some form or another were introduced to Dr. Atkins. Myself, either I, I think I saw an article like a Time Magazine where they like bacon and eggs and butter. I'm sitting there going, Sounds good to me. I mean, 30 days can't, won't kill me. And uh, you know, I didn't stick to it over those 20 years like I have uh, over the last uh, three to four years. But all of us are, ha oh, oh, where we're at today to Dr. Atkins and the work that he did. And um, I, I, I appreciate you saying that because, you know, Dr. Westman um, to this day works with Dr. Atkins' partner, so to speak, yep. in his complementary medicine practice, Nurse Jackie Eberstein. And um, I don't know why, but in the current incarnation of the keto and low carb, you know, online community, the Atkins diet has kind of a bad reputation. People will poo poo mm -hmm. it and say, oh, I'm not doing Atkins, I'm doing keto. When, when you, you said the exact right thing, anyone that is having any modicum of success with a, a carbohydrate restricted mm -hmm. way of eating, whether it's super strict keto or just low carb, we all owe him such a debt of gratitude. And I, yep. it kills me to see his name denigrated because he really was at, brilliant. And I actually just reread the book that got me started recently. I haven't read it in about a decade. And it, it you know, in all the things that I've learned professionally since reading it mm -hmm. when I was a lay person who didn't know anything about this, I'm blown away by how much is in there that I don't remember being in there because it wasn't relevant maybe to my personal situation yep. at the time. But way back, he was way, way ahead of his time talking about things that are only now being discussed in bigger circles. And I, I think he's so 
denigrated today just because of the, 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 the persistent lie. He died of a heart attack. No, he slipped and fell and banged his head. Um, I, I mean, I see it all the time on, on various groups online where people are like, hey, I'm following the Atkins diet. Well, you know, it killed him, right? No, it didn't. Um, unfortunately, the, you know, he slipped coming out of his apartment in New York City. And I think that's part of the reason a lot of the people that, that lie persists, just like a lot of you know, nutritional misperceptions, I'll be a little more politer on that one, um, continue to persist in that you know, fat kills. And I mean, I've got my five-year-old walking around. It's not intentional. He goes, sugar makes you fat. Yep. Fat doesn't. Yep. Um, so teaching, teaching them young here uh, at our house too. You know, I can verify the um, story about Dr. Atkins slipping on the ice. I, I was in the midst of our second study at the time. Uh, that one was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Will Yancey, my colleague, is the first, au first author, published in 2004. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dr. Atkins died in 2003. Uh, he, he saw the data that we had collected in preliminary form. Uh, and then that spring, there was a freak snowstorm in New York City where there was ice in the morning and Dr. Keith Berkowitz, who has been a friend through the years, was working with Dr. Atkins at the time and, and actually turned the corner and, and there Dr. Atkins was. So uh, <clears throat> Dr. Berkowitz picked up a lot of Dr. Atkins patients in New York City and still practices there um, uh, and in Midtown Manhattan, I think. But uh, yeah, it was a tragic thing to, to see happen and then also to hear the, the uh, someone got his death certificate by um, surreptitious means, you know, claiming they could yep. get it. And, and then they put that in the news. And the next thing you know, your know, diet doctor dies of heart attack. And, you know, it's like that telephone game that by the end it goes around, on, the story is entirely different. Yep. And uh, it's, yeah, it's too bad he didn't see um, this all change, although he, uh, Knowing Jackie Eberstein, the nurse that worked with him for so long, she tells the story that um, uh, Dr. Atkins sat down with her one day and said, you know, I'm not going to see this uh, lead to big uh, differences in the world, but you will. You know, mm -hmm. he really thought that uh, during her lifetime, because um, I think she was 10 years younger or something like that, that things would change. So um, I hope you'll be able to interview Jackie Eberstein. She's wonderful. It, you know, it didn't cross my mind until now. I've, I've heard her speak at uh, one of your ADAPT events when they were still going on in person. <laughs> and um, I've, I talked to her in um, Washington, D.C. last year. And yeah. just listening to her and talking to her, she is just so full of knowledge and information. And her, uh, her bluntness is, is fun sometimes also. So it's just great to listen to her. So I'm definitely going to have to reach out to her, too. She'd be a great one to talk to. Now, both, all of us actually are using, you know, the past 20 years of knowledge and information in various ways to help people. Obviously, um, I've started several companies to help provide people with products to help them uh, lose weight, get healthy, and feel amazing. I've started the Simple Low Carb Lifestyle Podcast. And you guys have also teamed up together to work on a book to help people out. Uh, to see here, the End Your Carb Confusion, A Simple Guide to Customize Your Carb Intake for Optimal Health. Um, I have already purchased it when it uh, comes out in December. And uh, why don't you guys give us a little background. Okay, what, what led you to write the book? Because I know, uh, Dr. Westman, you have, uh, with your page four and so forth, have had other things come out before. But uh, what prompted the two of you to work on this one in particular to help people, you know, just like our podcast says, live the simple low-carb lifestyle? Yeah, well, uh, you know, um... I was, an, I was an author, I am an author, on the new Atkins for a New You book with yeah. Steve Finney and Jeff Bullock. And then I'm an author with Jimmy Moore on keto clarity and cholesterol clarity. But I'd never done a book on my own. And you know, I was always helping other people or you know, being the medical kind of advisor of the book. So I think the timing is right to bring together the new keto low carb knowledge and, and broaden the, the appeal or uh, uh, the amount of people that could benefit from it. Because you know, there are a limited number of people who will do keto or will, might be actually uh, scared of it at first. So what we're doing is we're explaining that, you know, some people can eat carbs. 
you know, we might be, we might not like that. I have a, a brother who could, you know, and can. And, you know, so I'm kind of making it real that it's not this keto palace in the sky necessarily for everyone, although I think it's a fine thing to do and, and you know, I follow it personally. But so we're trying to take the knowledge of the high, we call higher carb, you know, up to 100 grams a day. Of course, everyone else mm -hmm. calls that low carb anyway. <laughs> so I guess it's, it's using the whole range of therapeutic and beneficial way of eating a low carb diet. And I think it'll be the first book that really kind of endorses a wide range of carb intake. Uh, and um, it, it, it's, it's solid science now. And now it's just translating it into uh, actionable language. And that's how I ran across Amy Berger, who has a knack of making things simple and easy. Yeah. And then philosophically, we have the same kind of aversion to making things complicated. We, we don't like a whole lot of, you know, drinking oils and things, you know, it, we both were influenced by Dr. Atkins and the yep. Atkins way of going about things. Uh, what differs from Atkins and the new Atkins book is we don't start out by saying to everyone, you have to do a low carb diet. You know, we, we introduce you to the whole range of things and help you decide where you could start and not everyone needs to do keto for a therapeutic mm -hmm. reason. Uh, um, but yeah, Amy was um, a, a great find to uh, work with on the book. Uh, and um, uh, had, of course has written uh, herself the uh, Alzheimer's antidote, uh, which uh, is still uh, widely read. And yep. um, so it's a great pleasure. I mean, we're, we're, it's a lot of work yet to be done. It's coming out in December but I'm really excited about it. Can I, can I like kind of take a step back and give the 50,000 foot view of the book? Yep. I, think, I think he may have gotten a little ahead of things. Um, I think the book, you know, your simple low carb lifestyle podcast and the, or the subtitle of the book, The Simple Guide, I think, you know, Eric and I are both stunned at how complicated this diet has been made out to be when all you really have to do to get most of the way to where you want to go is cut your carbohydrate intake. There's a mm -hmm. lot of other stuff that's very, very um, popular now and is very talked about everywhere, but it's not required to be successful with this diet. Yeah. Whatever success means to you, whether that means losing weight or lowering your blood sugar, normalizing your blood pressure, you know, getting rid of joint pain, getting rid of heartburn, all these things that this way of eating does. Um, and it's, it's not that any of those things, and I, by these extra things, I mean things like fasting or, um, you know, sticking to certain percentages of omega-6 and omega-3 fats in your mm. diet and buying, you know, only organic food and only grass-fed beef and that type of thing. Yep. That's like the advanced course. If you want to do that, it's not going to harm you, but it's not required to be successful with this way of eating. And when we make people think it is required, we're raising the bar to entry. We're automatically excluding people that can't afford yep. to eat very fancy schmancy food and who have very complicated lifestyles that can't have the specific timing of their meals every single day. And, and I think Eric and I both, our goal is to lower the bar of entry, make this as easy and as simple as possible for people to start. And yeah. even if they want to add those things in later at some point, that's fine. But to get started, here's the very simple guide. And then going, going to the other point, I mean, that's, that's really what we wanted to do is to cut through all the extraneous stuff. Here's what you need to do. And just, just worry about this. Don't even worry about that other stuff for now. The other part of it is like he was saying, not everybody needs keto. You know, yep. obviously it's a very effective way of eating for so many different things, but there are a lot of people out there who would never do keto, even if it would radically change their life for the better, even if, yep. but for some of those people, even just cutting carbs to some extent will help. It might not completely reverse whatever issue they're living with, but it's going to get a lot better. And isn't, wouldn't that be better than not doing anything at all? So we have, we have three levels of carbohydrate intake that depending on your, we have like a little checklist, depending on your situation, it points you mm -hmm. where to start. And, and the, the great thing is it's 
totally customizable because the fact is most people are going to start at the strictest level, which is basically Correct. Eric's page four, very, very strict carbohydrate intake, but it walks you through how to very gradually reintroduce carbs if you want to. You don't have to. You can stay yep. strict keto your whole life, but if you want to broaden your diet, when is it time to do that and how do you do it without triggering the weight to come back, without triggering all the health issues? That is what's missing from the keto space, we both think right now. Some, some acknowledgement of do this, be super strict. Okay, now you've lost 200 pounds, your heartburn is gone, your joint pain is gone, you're off all your diabetes meds, what now? Yep. So it's, I think yeah, it's, uh, it's unique, hopefully. Uh, and it, it sounds like it is. I mean, I like the fact, I don't know of anyone else out there who does say, hey, you don't necessarily have to do 20 carbs or less. I was actually talking to a friend of mine and one of his clients after they did some, uh, they uh, ran her epigenetics testing. She actually needs more carbs. She went carnivore and then incorporated upwards of a hundred carbs a day of like sweet potatoes and stuff. And she's actually now leaner, more fit and everything else because her body responds better to carbs uh, through, through testing and stuff. They figured that out. And even, so it's even great to hear. Yeah, even our highest carbohydrate recommendation, the highest, is is about 150 grams a day, and that's for very you know competitive athletes, very yeah. active, lean people. But even that, compared to the regular type Western diet, 150 grams is it's relatively low. low. It's 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 not ketogenic by any means, but compared to what so many people are currently eating, it actually is a pretty big reduction. Yep. It is, and also like, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say to say that everyone had to do keto or 20 grams or less and, or carnivore, and that's the only way, ignores a lot of experience and science mm -hmm. that, to the contrary. So, you know, even in the keto world, we have to open our minds to the ideas that people can accomplish good health in other ways. I mean, we can argue over the, well, you know, mice and worms live 10% longer if they're keto. Well, you know, I'm not yet ready to sign off that everyone will live better and longer and and um, uh, doing keto, but that's kind of the zealot, you know, so we could um, paint it like it's our way or the highway, like, because other yeah. types of eating patterns do that. And well, we don't do that. We're, we're open to the idea of, yeah, no sugar. I mean, so we're really yeah. kind of calling out sugar as the bad guy. And, uh, you know, you, you want to have fruit, sure, but you want to be careful about the amount and, and make sure mm -hmm. you're not limiting the proteins, which still are the most important nutrients that we need. Uh, but yeah, I, I suppose it'll cause a little stir among our keto crazy uh, uh, cuddle group, you know, our, our echo chamber. Yeah. But, uh, but we're trying to just broaden the, the more mainstream folks who would never even consider lowering carbs to, to open the eyes. No, actually, there's a lot of science and there are a lot of things you can do besides the stereotypical bacon. Uh, oh, well, not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with it. <laughs> but, uh, and you know, I'm having a growing number of people, uh, diverse uh, clients coming in who, who want to be vegetarian mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, that's fine. I mean, there's a whole, you know, there are cultures that eat in a vegetarian way and you can eat vegetarian and low carb, maybe not keto that yep. as low, but um, um, that kind of um, teaching is, is ready. And, you know, all of the studies have been done. And now it's just a way of communicating it that is clear and simple and actionable. And that's, that's something I really do think is needed to get rid of the, as Amy, you mentioned, the nitpicky that, like you said, you have to eat, you know, grass fed, you know, holistically raised, massaged by monks, beef. Hand and massage. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, um, I, our family, I buy the five dozen eggs at Walmart. That's $5 a dozen or less. I, I wait for the $1.99 ground beef at Aldi when it goes on sale. And we're as healthy as we've ever been. Um, yeah. And, and, and I, that's some of the things that we that is really needed, I think causes the confusion. They hear all of these voices saying, nitpick, nitpick, nitpick. And it's like, no, no, no. Start with the basics and you can add the others if, if you feel necessary later. Right. 
And I, you know, I, I, I work at a local farm here and if to yeah. anyone watching or listening, the three of us are actually all neighbors. We kind of all live in a general similar area of North Carolina and I yep. work at a local farm. I am completely supportive of that type of, of animal husbandry and raising, you know, growing produce that way. But the fact is it's expensive and not yeah. everyone can afford it. And so if you can afford it and you want to support that type of agriculture and keep those dollars in your local area, by all means, means do it but i i obviously it is entirely possible to be just as successful eating regular food from the discount store from walmart from your regular grocery store and i would personally say that if if you know about this concept of voting with your food dollars you know where, where you spend your money you're basically supporting that type of thing Mm -hmm. But you're still sending a message to the Walmart manager or to your grocery store manager by buying meat and eggs and cheese and poultry and pork and whatever, even if it's conventionally produced, by not spending your money on the breakfast cereal and the granola and the sugar and the junk, you're still sending an economic message. So I, I, it's still all good, all good. And I, it's, again, it's just raising the bar. And it's, it's unfortunate because, you know, s uh, colleagues that we respect are, there's a lot of fear mongering about this way of eating that, you know, mm. it, it's, it's not even that you, they'll say you have to eat grass fed or you have to eat organic. It's that if you don't, you're actively harming yourself. You're killing yourself if you eat conventionally raised chicken. That is completely nonsense. Yep. And it's, it's unfortunate that that's really getting a lot of attention now. Now, correct attention. me if I'm wrong. Um, I was going to say attention is um, attracted by that controversy. So, or or yeah. by, by the sensationalism is what it is, yeah. 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 Uh, did I hear correctly, Dr. Westman, you even have to, to some extent, teach your patients how to, how to eat at a fast food joint in order to help them along on their journey? Well, you know, the fact of the matter is most of my patients will eat at a fast food place or, or restaurant of some kind. And, um, and so I was taught by my patients how to go to <laughs> place like McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, and yep. just not eat the bun, don't have the fries, uh, and they've done very well. And, you know, I can't say to the level of, uh, you know, doing vitamin levels in the, the cells of that it's perfect, but it's, they're a lot healthier without diabetes, without obesity, yes. high blood pressure. So from a, a you know, a duh kind of point of view, <laughs> it, it, it's okay to not eat the grass-fed stuff and uh, not there's anything wrong with it but um yep. uh it was through not by my choice of what to have and uh, that's i'm afraid a lot of what we see is the blending low carb keto with what's you know the mainstream kind of fad uh, at the moment you know um mm. in terms of nutrition and or what products are being sold things like that so uh, while Keto has never been as popular as before, and and you know I certainly tolerate kind of benign products that people are selling, and and certainly legitimate products like yours that are you would have to buy anyway. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love that those products are are uh, making this more popular. I, we actually need more companies involved with the engine of of, of corporate America changing in this way. Yep. Jamie says buying food that doesn't have a bun and, you know, people will notice that the buns are left behind and they'll, you know, yeah. it's a waste for them. Uh, and um, so, you know, there's that double-edged sword of new, really not necessary products out there. And yes, I've seen people get distracted and, and derailed by, you know, the you know, keto, whatever product. And, you know, the general rule is if it says great for a keto diet, you want to avoid it. <laughs> you, you know, it, um, what you want to do is stick to real foods and yes. um, uh, or every now and then you have to have chocolate. I understand. And, and your Wednesday wine, correct, Amy? Yes. <laughs> you you can actually, fit alcohol into keto if you're strategic about it and you're, you know, if it's, it, you just have to do it the right way. Yep. And I mean, back to your points about uh, shopping with your dollars. I mean, my local Walmart here has an entire rack of pork rinds. Um, <laughs> lots of varieties, lots of flavors. Uh, I have a difficult time finding the G Hughes sugar-free ketchup at my Walmart. It's always sold out. So I usually grab because my kids, they'll put ketchup on anything. Carrots, how old is put some ketchup on? I mean, 
they're crazy. So I, every time I walk by, I, I try to grab a bottle of it. They have sugar-free barbecue sauces. They even now carry some of the primal products. Um, and they do have some of the other stuff that has keto blazoned all over it. And you look at the ingredients and go, eh. But more and more low, sh low sugar, sugar-free products are showing up in the marketplace because that's where our monies are being spent. And um, that's, a, I mean, that's a good point. Even, even five years ago, let alone two decades ago when all of us started to get into yeah. this, five years ago, you would not have seen pre-made frozen rice cauliflower or pre-made yep. zucchini noodles that you could buy already prepared. That, that would have been ludicrous. And now it's everywhere. It's, yeah. That stuff is everywhere. Yeah, that rice cauliflower is a great example. I mean, that's one of the, I think, one of the greatest low-carb inventions of recent history. It's like, <laughs> I can make stir-fry now uh -huh. and not have to worry about it. It's, it. it's a great filler if you want to make a hamburger helper. Yeah. That, like, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things I like to share online is that you can make hamburger helper like you used to. Just use healthy ingredients, not stuff in a box. Uh, and it doesn't take any longer to make it either. Um, yep. We used to teach the, you know, you had to pat dry the cauliflower and put it in your food processor and I mean, yep. you can still do that. But um, having cauliflower rice and, and you know, I couldn't let a podcast go without talking about the amazing invention of a chuffle. The yes. cheese and egg waffle. I, you know, it is the best thing since sliced bread because it yes. substitutes for that and it's so easy. And if you've never heard of a chuffle, it's a cheese waffle. So ch stands for cheese waffle. Um, and uh, it, you can do it very complicated with all these different ingredients, or you can do it very simply with cheese and eggs. It's one of the yep. first things I teach people now. Yeah, I used to teach the old revolution roll or cloud bread, which you had to whip mm -hmm. up the egg whites, fold it into the yolks and cream cheese and put it on it. Oh, no, that's too much work. No. <laughs> people, I, I've had people come back talking about chaffles and pork rind pancakes every week. Oh, Someone says, yes. you know, I finally tried those, those special pancakes. I said, pork rind pancakes? Yeah. And I said, well, I kind of sheepishly, what do you think? And they look at me like, it was great. You know, like, it's not supposed to be good, right? They're a little yep. naughty by having pork rinds in their pancakes. Oh, that is great. And I, I still remember uh, the first time I finally had a burger on a chaffle. It's like, I can pick up my burger now. I don't have to use a fork and a knife or, and I never cared for it, wrap it in lettuce and have the grease run down my arm. because yeah. I never liked the lettuce wraps. Yeah, I, I couldn't stand. I remember when they first launched years ago at Hardee's, thought it was the greatest thing ever at the time. But yeah, the, the chaffle is definitely the greatest invention since sliced bread. It's made our lives a whole lot easier. You know, it must have been a, a waffle maker idea, don't you think? I mean, how do yeah. you get, how do you sell your waffle makers, right? Come up with I don't know if that's the case, but uh, if it, it was probably Dash because they're the one that makes the little mini mm -hmm. mini ones, and for the longest time they were sold out for weeks on end. If you ordered one, Amazon will ship it to you whenever it becomes available. So hmm. we'll just blame Dash. I'd like to hear the the story of how that started. If if you ever do a podcast on that let me know i'll have to figure that out find hunt down the uh, the person who came up with it and and go from there that would be fun <laughs> um anything else about the book in particular that uh, you guys like to to go over about it well you know we're, we're just seeing the the um first look at how the the actual copy on paper is looking at and i'm just really pleased and excited you know i didn't want to write a book that's boring and looks all terrible. No, it's inviting. It, it has, uh, you know, fresh artwork on it. And we have new uh, art made in, inside it. And of course, Amy wrote most of the, the text and um, it, uh, it's very readable. Um, I think we got the, the highlight is that it is something I want everyone to read. I mean, even, mm. even my brother who can eat carbs ought to read the basic healthy way of eating, which is you know, to minimize the refined sugar and refined mm. flour and starch, which yep. pretty much is consensus now. Well, I think um, in, in our book, we also 
you know, we were mentioning earlier that not everybody needs a very strict ketogenic diet. Some people can be more flexible, but we make the point in the book that even if, you know, you go through the checklist, even if your result points you toward a higher level, you might want to try the very strict mm. just to see what happens. You might have resolution of a little issue that you didn't even know you had till it went away. Little, just little niggling things that, oh. you know, I, I feel like that happens very often that you know, so- heartburn. And, Heartburn is the most common one. Yeah. yeah. People just don't, you know, it's been so, oh, doctors say you have to watch out for spicy food and coffee and chocolates. And, you know, and that, that has nothing to do with it. It's all about yep. the carbs. And so uh, I'll have people, uh, I don't even, I don't oversell what's going to happen. And I, I just, if someone comes in and they have heartburn every day, and I just kind of make a mental note and then ask when they come back, so do you have any heartburn? And, no, I'm not. Well, so that is one of the things that you you just wouldn't believe that it happens, but it, it's almost as reliable as the weight loss. You know, that, yeah. so there are these other non-scale changes, non-scale victories or non-scale health benefits that I, I hope it just um, really uh, catches on. And uh, of course, pre-ordering helps the whole, um, uh, how should I say, the, the hoopla about it and Yes. To get on the bestseller list, things like that. So um, you can actually pre-order it now at Amazon. Thanks for doing that, Corey. Yep. Yeah, and that, that's something you, as you were saying that I was thinking is, is if you want to go to Amazon, just search for end your carb confusion, it'll come up. And by pre-ordering it, it does move it up the rankings. It helps give it more visibility. People will see it more often. And uh, as they've said, even if you may be one of those higher carb people, you may you might learn that, hey, if I back off and, re and eat fewer carbs. Uh, I was about to say restrict, but that sounds restrictive. Um, so, but if, you know, you may find out, hey, um, like I know several people and myself included, the eczema disappeared. I had it right, right along my belt line. It would drive me nuts. And when I finally said, that's it, I'm done. I'm living this way. It's gone. I have not had it flare up in three years. Yeah. Lots, uh, the, of, the, lots of skin issues get better. You know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to steal a line that Eric says, keto, it's so good for so many different things. It's so unbelievable. You won't believe it, but it, you yeah. start to sound like a snake oil salesman. Oh, you have migraines. Mm -hmm. You should try keto. You have gout. Did you try keto? Eczema, try keto, but it works. Yeah. We say that because it works. It's just, you, you can't, you can't unsee what you've seen. And, yes. you know, the reason, the reason we are so hyped up about it is because it is that powerful. And, and it's for any age. I mean, uh, my kids are five and seven and now they, they definitely eat a low carb diet, but they basically, what I'm eating with the occasional fruit um, as their dessert. I mean, if they had a true dessert, they would probably spit it out because it's so sweet. Hmm. Um, to myself in my mid forties. Then I got my parents finally a couple of years ago to yeah, after being uh, almost a jerk about it on my end, so hounding them to know when it's like, you got a choice here. You can hang around to see your grandkids or not. And um, now, now instead of, you know, Hey, it's nap time. It's all right, kids. What do you want to go do? Uh, there's so many issues in their mid to late sixties have cleared up, you know, sleeping better, um, being regular, for lack of better words, without getting into too much detail, and uh, being able to walk around, not needing a cane or a walker or a jazzy to get from place to place, but you can go walk up and down the beach and enjoy it and not sit there and watch somebody else. I mean, it is for all age groups, and, I, and listening to what you guys have put in the book, the beauty of it is you guys discuss how to fine-tune it to your body, because every Buddy, and every body is completely different. The person that needs to keep it under 20 pound carbs is not going to need the same thing as the person that can handle 75 to 100 and anywhere in between. So it's great to hear that uh, you guys have gotten together to put that out there to say, look, basically experiment, find out what works best for you, and then live the healthiest life you possibly can. Yeah. And I, th this is the book that I would want to read if I was brand new to this. You know, when mm -hmm. I was brand new, there was, we mentioned the Atkins book and there was the book Protein Power by Mike and Mary Dan Eads. And you know, yeah. they're, they're still active in the low carb scene. And there was, 
I mean, literally when I was brand new to this, Facebook did not exist. Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube did not exist. I mean, we're talking years and years ago. Yeah. And there was a lot less information, but there was a lot less misinformation. So True. I I feel like we're bringing people back to center. You know, it's just, I, I can't even imagine trying to start this if I was new. There's 800,000 YouTube channels. There's a million things on social media and everybody's saying something different. How do you... How do you know what to do? And this is, you know, everybody's plan works for somebody. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not that these don't work. It's just, or is it going to work for you? And um, so I think this, this is the place to start. This is the easiest, most effective, simplest way to start. And then if sometime in the future, you want to play around with somebody else's program, do it. But if you're brand new and you are totally overwhelmed by what's out there, just start simply. So, you know, the book is one effort that we're involved in. Another one, uh, for those who really want a deep dive into the keto world, we de developed the Adapt Your Life Academy. And the first, these are for online courses. Uh, and hopefully we'll be turning the Andrew Carp Confusion into courses as well. Uh, but the first course we're rolling out in October 2020 is basically Keto Made Simple. Again, it's the simple approach but it is just keto. So it doesn't get into the car, injured carb confusion, higher carb levels. Uh, but I'm really excited about it because um, there's, again, so much confusion, misinformation, and I'm getting to learn all of these great quotes, you know, that uh, 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 people are saying that, you know, Einstein said, if you can't explain something to a six-year-old, you really don't understand it, you know? So yeah, yeah we're making it really simple, understandable, and so Adapt Your Life is a company I'm involved in that makes low carb keto products. It's also now an education company. That's the, uh, the yep. Adapt events really turned the pivot toward education. And we'll be rolling out the first course in October. So if you go to Adapt Your Life Academy slash subscribe, you gotta get onto a newsletter. We start sending you information and give you more details about the course as it unfolds. I kind of figured that the, the course was going to come up somewhere along the lines in this one because I've been following it on um, Facebook and in the Adapt Your Life group and looking forward to seeing how that uh, all unfolds and how it really changes lives because uh, as we've all learned, it's made a difference in all of our lives and we've all seen how it's affected others and it's going to, it's a great way to get it out there and to help people because some people can read a book and be good. Others are going to need, a, a, just politely say, a little more hand-holding a step-by-step -step, and uh, the academy is going to be great for helping people with that too you know i needed my hand held when i got into this 20 years ago i totally understand that and and i was not only doing it myself i was helping other people you know in a doctor therapeutic way i had mm -hmm. other doctors help me uh um and so this is kind of paying that forward also telling stories of other people that hopefully people will see Oh yeah, that's that's me. Maybe it will work for me. So for the people who are just curious about it, we hope that it will dispel lots of the myths. Again, make it really simple and easy, which is all the uh, philosophy that we have. Easy, simple, and, and tasty. It has to be tasty. Yeah, it has to be tasty, and it is. That's the beauty. I mean, I still remember. One of the first times after my body finally adapted to eating this way, I was eating, it was, I think, broccoli. And I'm like, this is actually sweet. You know, and then when you go to eat something that you used to that was sweet, it's almost, a, it hurts your teeth. As, I mean, it, it's almost bitter anymore. Um, and it, and back to your point of, you know, others have helped us. It's just like anything in life. If you don't know, there's somebody there to teach you. You're not going to just wake up one day and go, <gasps> I know how to do this. It's a process. There's, there's, there's people to listen to and to talk to and to ask questions. And that's what uh, your book and the Adapt uh, Your Life Academy is for. That's what this podcast is for. It's for those people that are sitting there going, I, I'm not sure what to do. Well, here's some resources to help you along the way. And um, don't, don't get overwhelmed. You know, pick, pick a resource and go with it. Because uh, that shotgun approach is going to drive you nuts. So any other closing comments you guys might have? 
Well, I'm, I'm going to plug your product a little bit and, and everyone watching or listening, please know this is totally unscripted. Like I'm not, this is from the heart. I, I should have been prepared. I have Corey's Select Savory Seasonings. I have seasonings in my cupboard right there. I have yep. some of the Biltong in my cabinet right there. I should have had it to hold up. Anyway, his stuff is great. It's very, very hard to find zero sugar, like beef jerky type snacks and meat sticks and you can get them Select Savory snacks. It's, um... It is delicious and it's zero sugar and it's that's we have those things in in our book in the um in the the, the allowed snacks and and we call them unlimited because it's zero sugar and it's basically yeah. a lot of protein with a little bit of fat really good quality stuff and we say it's unlimited within reason because unlimited but when you eat this way, your appetite is so well regulated that you're not going to tend to just eat eight pounds of biltong in a day. Yeah. So, um, but it's it's so nice to have a zero sugar option. It's so difficult to find that in a get or you you're because this way of eating is becoming so popular. I do see it now sometimes, like at gas station convenience stores. But guess what? It's four times the price of the other stuff. Yeah. So it's um it's it's tough, but it's uh, the stuff is delicious. So if you haven't tried Corey's Drawer Wars and the Biltong yet, get on that. <laughs> I appreciate that, and if, as everybody's gonna hear as we go along, uh, the sponsors of the podcast are our Select Savory Seasonings and Select Savory Snacks, which are all one website now. I'm not sure if you've caught that yet or not. So just not selectsavory.com, okay. because then I've had lots of customers go, well, I want to buy both. Well, they were separate websites. So now it's all one. You can buy whatever you want and it all comes in one package, not two. So it helps out too. I appreciate that. That's great to hear. So, and um, I think I already got Dr. Westman's answer to this question. Uh, your favorite simple low carb meal, that is chaffles. <laughs> and whatever you would put into the chaffles. Well, uh, <laughs> I have to say it, it's still a, a good steak. I mean, ribeye or filet. Yep. Can't beat that. I, that was last night's dinner for our, at our house. And I think Amy's is something, well, yours isn't steak in particular. Well, so it, so you said my favorite simple low carb meal, right? Yes. Or, yep. So simple, honestly, so many nights in a given week, I'll just brown ground beef or ground pork or loose sausage in a pan and have some kind of vegetable side. It could be steamed broccoli. It could be roasted Brussels sprouts and that's it. It's yeah. just it's just a meat that I just brown in a pan. It takes eight minutes and, and a vegetable. It's so it's dead. Simple. And you're done. That that yeah. that is the vast majority of our dinners. Um, is it is ground beef, a veggie, and we're done. It, it's not complicated. And uh, just one simple tip that each of you would give to people that are looking at either looking at or already trying to live the simple low carb lifestyle to help them along on that journey. Well, the theme that we're trying to say in many different ways is that it's about the healthy eating is about keeping the sugar low, keeping the carbs mm. low, not having fat and ketone products and things like that. So focus on keeping the carbs low as a general theme uh, is, is I think a, a tip that a lot of people don't hear today getting the keto 2020. It's all these products and things that actually aren't very beneficial, very helpful. Mm, that's true. I think I think my tip would be, and I, I just did a video on this actually. If someone out there wants to try this or has tried it and failed or whatever, a try again. But you don't have to make this change overnight. If this is a radical change from how you're currently eating, it's okay to ease into it. You don't have to yeah. do keto overnight. You can cut you know what the first week no more breakfast cereal but you you can still have your fruit your potatoes your rice your bread no cereal the second week no cereal and no potatoes and no potato products so no fries home fries chips whatever each week remove something mm -hmm. until you eventually you'll get to the point where you're on the keto diet you just did it more gradually and it wasn't such a shock and you were able to stick with it because it was just a slow transition. Now, if you are living with morbid obesity or type two diabetes or some serious issue, it's you're gonna get better faster if you just rip that bandaid off all at yeah. once and do it. But if you're more likely to stick with this and make this your life by, by easing into it, that's perfectly fine. There's no law that says you have to do this tomorrow and you have to do it right 100% the first time. It's, it's okay to gradually, nobody's health, 
ever got worse by cutting out sugar or by cutting back even. So yep. just head in that direction and you'll get to the destination eventually. Yeah, you already used the analogy. Not everybody has to rip the Band-Aid off. Uh, and some people, that's, that was their failure. They ripped it off, the, the cravings hit and they binged and went back. And sometimes, yeah, just like an addict, you may need to titrate slowly. Oh, well, not just like they are addicts. I know I was there. Um, so that, that's a great tip too. Where can both of you be found online uh, if people want to interact with you and uh, reach out to you? Well, the company adaptyourlife.com is my corporate headquarters and then the Adapt Your Life Academy slash subscribe if you want to get into the newsletter and learn about the Academy courses. I also have a um, Dr. Westman online, D-R-W-E-S-T-M-A-N online.com that kind of points you to the, the most important uh, internet resources that are related to my stuff. There's so much out there now. <laughs> and there is a little click for the class that I did. A lot of people watch the white coat video and a little click for chaffles and cheese crisps mm -hmm. you can make on your own. Good. Amy? So my main website is tuitnutrition.com, T-U-I-T, nutrition.com. And uh, my YouTube channel is the same name, Tuit Nutrition. That's also my handle on um, Twitter and Instagram. I, I don't do a whole lot on Facebook. Twitter's kind of my home. And uh, if you are already following a low-carb or ketogenic diet and you have stalled in your weight loss, I have another book called The Stall Slayer. You can find that at stallslayer.com. And that's about exactly that, about breaking fat loss stalls on low carb diets and it's my turn i have read uh, that book it's an excellent book oh, thank you. wasn't again that's something i necessarily needed i i knew a lot of that from my own research but in going through it it's like oh there were still other things i went i didn't realize that that could affect this and uh, so that is a great book for those of you that um may be stuck for several months and you're wondering well what do i do next um the stall slayer is a great book i'd, I'd recommend you picking it up so thank you both for your time. I know you're both very busy and uh, thanks for joining us today. And I know this will be uh, very, ben very beneficial to everybody who uh, uh, listens to it. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you Take Corey. care. All the best. Thank you.